What's the most powerful Excel VBA construct? And perhaps it's a construct that if you're a beginner with Excel VBA, you've been avoiding. Yes, loops. Loops in Excel VBA allow us to repeat an instruction any number of times, thousands of times, even more. You can get a huge amount of work done using loops in Excel VBA. In this video, I'm going to take you through how to build a loop in Excel VBA step by step. And this is part two in season three of our Excel VBA real world task series. So make sure you check out video one because you won't really understand what's going on in video two if you don't. And remember, if you enjoy these real world task series, I love putting them together. We have many of them in our Excel VBA for football traders member community. It's a unique uh, resource. There's so much good stuff in there, including interacting with me and other members. So do check that out. The link is in the video description below. So with that said, let's get back into our task and so make sure you've downloaded the file and you've worked through the first video and you're ready for this second video. So we want to do loop. We want to loop through our fixtures. Hmm. So how to do with how to do that? Now loops can get tricky. Have you ever been in an interminable interminable loop in Excel? You just keep looping around. You can't get out of it. It does happen. So we've got to be very careful, careful, very deliberate, working step by step through what we're doing here. To put this loop together, what do we need? Well, I can tell from my pseudo code that we're going to declare a variable to help support this loop. Not absolutely necessary, but it's the approach that I recommend. Now, there's three types of loop in Excel VBA. We could use a for each loop. We could do a do until loop. We could do a for next loop. I recommend for this a for each loop. If you only want to know one loop in VBA, you only need to know one. Let's do a for each loop. So to do that, we're going to say dim fixture cell as range. Hmm. So it's a range variable. It's an object variable. And this allows Excel to locate where we are in the loop. Remember, clear conceptual thinking, we're just working down these fixtures one by one. And this fixture cell, cell variable will allow Excel to locate where we are. That's exactly what we need. So we've got our variable. Now we need our fundamental construct for the loop. And if we're using a for each loop, the, the construct is for each fixture cell in fixture cell, I'm just repeating the name of the variable we've previously declared up here for each fixture cell in, I'm going to say sheets fixtures dot range, fixture sheets, of course, and then we've got the range here. So I'm holding down the shift key and using the cursors there just to get the range. So it's B9 to B18. B9 to B18. So we've got to be precise here. If we get this range wrong, things aren't going to work later. So I'm going to say B9 to B18 here. Hmm. Okay, so are you following along with me? Hopefully, you're building up this syntax uh, step by step. So what do we need here? Hmm. Well, I'm not building up the syntax step by step, am I? But it's fine. That happens all the time in Excel VBA. I missed out a piece of syntax there for each fixture cell in this range here. So we're going to do something to every cell in this range. So we need to now complete the basic construct, our template for building this loop. We've opened the loop. We've got to remember to close it. So I'm going to say next fixture cell. That's it, guys. That's all the loop is. Let's take a moment just to observe this language. So when we're using a for each loop, for each variable name in and then this is called a collection. And in this case, because we're using a range variable, we're just going to show Excel what range to look at. Could be any range. And then at the bottom, we've got next and fixture style. And what you'll see is Excel highlights in blue the real fundamental syntax, that blueprint, that template that you'll, you'll use whenever you use a for each loop. Just going to take a moment now to catch up with our comments, with our annotations. So our annotations here, we're not going to dispense with these, remember. We're going to make sure we put the annotation next to the line of code. You might say, Chris, you know, I don't need to do that. You know, that's fine. But I can tell you from 12 years of doing Excel VBA development projects, this matters. 
And it, it, it matters because when you come back to look at this file in a year's time, two years time, you're, you're going to have trouble understanding what's going on. I can guarantee it. The annotations really help us understand what's going on. So here we're starting the loop through all fixtures, and then we want to end the loop through all fixtures. So for each line of code, we have an annotation there. So I'm loving this. We're keeping those coding standards um, as high as we can. Okay, so the loop appears to be in place. So how could we test this loop? Another Excel meta skill we're going to touch on in this series I'm always talking about on the channel, debugging and testing. So how can we test this is actually working? We don't have to do any testing now, do we? So why are we doing testing now? Because you should test at every step. That's the way to quickly identify what's going on. That's the way to avoid that situation where you're like, oh, it's too complicated. I'm just going to give up. So we test step by step. Mm. So how to test? Various ways to do this, but I like the simplicity of using message box and then the variable name. And we're going to say dot value as well. That's not necessary because value is the default property. But what will this loop do now? This is a debugging technique I use all the time. And now let's get in and let's see how the code's working. So you could just hit play, but I'd recommend stepping through this code. So let's go to uh, debug and then step into on the Windows PC, you can just hit the F8 key and we're going to see that Excel has highlighted a line of code. What does that mean? Excel is saying, I'm going to run this code next time you hit the F8 key or next time you hit this uh, step into command here. So we're stepping through the code. Super powerful. Okay, we got down to this line of code. And now we're in the loop. How many times are we going to go through the loop? Well, it's 10 times, isn't it? There's 10 rows in this range. So stop the video. What's going to happen when we execute this line of code? When the line of code is highlighted yellow, we're not going to, um, it hasn't happened yet. So when we hit F8, Excel is going to execute that line of code. And we can see it says Greyhound. That seems to make sense, doesn't it? Seems okay because it's the first, the value in the first cell in our range. Hmm. Can you see what's happening? Because it's a loop, it's going to go back to the top now and then back through and then Jack Russell. Seems to make sense, doesn't it? Okay, I'm just going to hit the play button at the top now and that's just going to go through the names. So we've now got Newfoundland, Border Collie, Poodle, Cocker Spaniel, Dachshund, is that how you say it? German Shepherd. Springer Spaniel, and then finally Golden Retriever. Now, hopefully, we should now exit our loop. Mm. Okay, and Golden Retriever, finally, of course, our final team, and we've now exited the loop there. Mm. Okay, so how about that? That's a loop in action. Not doing anything particularly exciting yet, is it? But that's how you should go about setting up and testing a loop. So what's the next step? The next step is to take this to the next level, a really advanced te technique, a loop within loop concept here. That's what we're going to try to do because for each team, we want to loop through all of this game data. So that's my challenge to you. That's my challenge to you before the next video. Can you go ahead and create the next loop and then do some testing to make sure we've got this loop within loop idea working in this video? What already really advanced techniques here on the Excel VBA Real World Series Season 3. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And remember, if you enjoy these real world task videos, I love putting them together, but sometimes they're not that popular. We have loads in our member communities. So make sure you check out, check out our member communities. And if you're into football data, check out Excel VBA for football traders. I would love to see you there. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care. See you in the next video.